everyone, welcome back to Unicorn Dust Designs. And if you are new here, hello, my name is Sammy. Today is our Try It Tuesday challenge. I cannot wait to show you who I was inspired by this month for some spring DIYs. And with that said, let's just get right into the DIYs. Our first inspired piece is by Lovely Moments Creating. I saw her make this and one, it's absolutely gorgeous. And two, I was like, oh my gosh, I think I have all the stuff to make it. So I grabbed one of these, I guess it would be like a tray, but I got them from a garage sale. They were like a dollar each. So y'all hit up those garage sales, thrift stores. I find these things, basket thingies like this all the time. So I am just gonna do one coat of plaster over this entire thing. I'm not trying to get full coverage. I like the dimension that it gives you having like that little bit of that natural color pop through. And then I'm gonna take the back of a Dollar Tree sign. I keep everything and this is exactly why. So I am going to paint this with um, plaster as well. I'm gonna go ahead and do two coats of it. I do hit the sides with the rough sanding block just to kind of get a, those imperfections away. Bless you, Momo. Okay, so like I said, we're gonna do two coats of this. I don't end up covering the back because seriously, it does not show at all. And you all know I would cover it if it did. So then taking um, our antique wax, I'm just gonna hit the sides, go over the top of it just a little bit. I think it just gives it a little bit more, but if that ain't you, do you? All right, so now I'm gonna take floral wire from Dollar Tree. I'm gonna find the placement on the um, basket and I'm gonna staple this to the sign. Now, this sign is a little thin, so the staples went through, but don't worry, it doesn't show, we cover it. So as I put this staple in, I twist it around so that our floral wire doesn't just come slipping through the staple. Now I'm gonna find the placement. I'm just gonna feed these through the little holes in our tray here and this was so easy to do and then as i take it through the back i just twist it nice and tight i do the same thing for the opposite side and next you guys we do the florals now at first i was sticking these through just trying to figure out placement okay i think i got this huge bouquet at uh walmart so as I'm sticking them through, I'm like, wow, this is exactly like when I do grapevine wreaths. And you guys know if you've watched my videos before, if I don't have to glue something, I don't want to because I want to be able to reuse it again. And as I'm sticking these through, I'm like, well, these are wired picks. So I just turn it around and I end up cutting these stems down and then feeding it through the weave of the basket and these held up so tight and so nice. So I, I was excited, you guys, because now I'm like, I could take these flowers out, I could take these this sign off, and I can make this into something every season if I wanted to. So I do the top, and to balance it off, I start again with the bigger flower, the peony, and then I will build off of that flower and dress it up with some of these fillers. And you guys, I love how this turned out. I love how simple it was. And like I said, hit up those thrift stores, Goodwill, Savers. You'd be shocked by what you find. And if you live in an area that has nice weather, go to those garage sales, yard sales. Oh my gosh, I love this. So then to hang this, I get the floral wire Again, I feed it through the weaves of the basket. I go on one side, I'm gonna twist it up nice and tight. Then I go to the other side and I make it so that you cannot see the hanger at all. So when I hang this, it's just gonna look like the basket's hanging there. You're not gonna see twine or any of that. I then put this Hello uh, vinyl decal. This font is about love. I have no idea what color this vinyl is at all. And then we're done. Look at how gorgeous that came out. And I could even put, I might put this on my front door. I have a storm door, so I'm not worried about like the sign getting damaged or anything, but I love how bright it is. I love how simple. And this is exactly like why we get inspired. Like we make things our own and that's exciting. 
All right, y'all, that was the first inspired DIY. If you guys are new to my channel, Try It Tuesday is a challenge I host every last Tuesday of the month where creators can come together and they are basically like duping somebody they're inspired by, but we are giving full credit to that person, the channel, the blog, the Pinterest post, whatever it may be. You can find all of the links to the DIYs I'm doing, um, the links to the video and the link to their channel down in my description box. It's just a great way to share other creative people with our viewers and to share people that, you know, inspire us on a day-to-day -day basis as well. So definitely go down in the description box, check it out. There's going to be a playlist. Hopefully there's more people um, joining in with us this month. I haven't done it in um, a few months because of my pregnancy. So um, definitely check out the playlist, see if other creators have joined us in this challenge. And with that said, you guys, you know the drill. If you're digging me, if you're digging the DIYs, if you're digging the channel, then make sure you like, make sure you subscribe, Hey, subscribe because it's an absolutely free way you can help me out on my channel and with that said you guys let's go ahead and get into the rest of the diys this next one is by megan from glue guns and roses and you guys so i'm watching this video and you guys know what i'm talking about you watch these diy videos and you're like that looks so easy i'm gonna make that uh, like easy peasy right and then you're like start the, then you start like cursing under your breath and then you're like oh she sits on the throne of lies and really we know that like usually DIYs take us like 45 minutes each and then they're condensed down to five minutes but she made this DIY look so easy and it was not for me so we're gonna make eight rows of five Jenga blocks. You could stain them if you want. We are gonna end up painting these. I am using wood glue, and as you can see, wood glue takes about like five minutes to set up. So instead of like touching them and picking them up, I'm just sliding them over so I can continue on to the rest of them. So after those are dry, then you're gonna take two of them. One you're gonna put up on its side, and the other one is going to be uh, flat on your table so that you're you're making a corner essentially and then you're going to use your wood glue I highly recommend wood glue or super glue not hot glue or this is going to fall apart on you and you're going to continue to do that for the rest of them so you should have basically four pieces when you're done now I'm going to take a Dollar Tree sign I painted this because you guys know I like a finished look but you don't really see this at all. So if you don't want to paint it, you don't have to because you seriously don't see the, the inside at all. But this is going to be the base of our lantern. Now I'm taking those corners we made. And you guys, the top piece is just another Dollar Tree sign I popped the back out of. And I am going to take my um, Starbond Super Glue. I'm going to attach all of my corners to the bottom of the sign. So you can see at the bottom of the sign actually has the backing still in there. And then again, just attaching the corners on here. Hers looks so flawless and oh my gosh, I'll let you know the part I was starting to curse under my breath. But then I apply the, the super glue on the top. I attach the one side first. I make sure that's good and solid. Then as you can see, I have to kind of pull those corners out so that it fits the top frame perfectly. And you can see how cute it's already coming together, right? So I'm going to take this outside. I spray it with Serenity Blue chalk paint. All right, this is when I start cursing under my breath. So I had this chicken wire. It was from like Hobby Lobby. One, it was too, it wasn't wide enough to cover the entire thing. Megan like just sets hers in there. Well, since mine was too small for this, I had to staple it. I had to hot glue the bottom piece to like get it to stay since I couldn't reach the staple that far down. And you guys, this was just like that moment where you're like, do you keep going? Do you give up? And I was like, no, you're sticking through it. We already put, put the Jenga blocks together. We are going. 
So after I finally get all the chicken wire in there, I hit the, um, the lantern with some plaster, just kind of, you know, giving it a little bit of whitewash, covering my imperfections. Now, Megan's looks like one piece. You don't really know it's Jenga blocks because she said she put super glue over and then sanded it. So right here, you could see since I had to staple all these pieces in there, I was like, I can't leave the top exposed. So I took the back of my Dollar Tree sign that I popped out of the top piece and this wood piece came from Hobby Lobby. I'm going to glue that on. And then I'm going to take the finial cap, which came from Walmart. I'm gonna put that right in the middle. I'm gonna spray this with that Serenity Blue chalk paint. I'm gonna take whitewash over it, dry brush over that. And next I just put some Spanish moss in there. I put some eggs I painted last year, some eggs I got at Savers. And then my little added touch, cause you guys know I couldn't just leave it like that. I get these little uh, flower thing. They remind me of you guys, what what are the, the weeds that grow out in the grass that are yellow flowers? But like, you know, you could chew the stem and they're really sour. Okay, is that just me? I'm the one that picks weeds and chews on them. Okay, uh, anyways. I take these and then I just kind of push them through just to add another element to it so it's not so plain, it adds more dimension. And I really love how this comes together. Let me know what you guys think. See, the lid, I like the lid. I, I think that adds a little something extra. It covers up all of these staples and the mess I made. But I really, really love how this turned out. Even my whole setup, I would probably leave it just like that in my home decor. All right, the next one is from Shannon's Crafty DIYs. Of course, I saw the cloche and I was like, well, who doesn't want to make their own of those? So I'm taking an old candlestick, recycle, reuse, reduce, and I am gonna hit that with plaster two times. I am then going to take a Dollar Tree sign. I think these are the like five and a quarter by five and a quarter. And I am gonna do two coats of the plaster on this sign. And uh, you guys, you can make this whatever color you want. That's what I love about this. And don't worry, we'll cover that backside. Don't, don't you worry. All right, so now taking these stickers from Dollar Tree, aren't these? You, if you guys like the fancy stuff, I mean, leave it just like, I mean, these are so gorgeous. However, that is not my style in our house. So um, I am going to stick these on and then I am going to cover it with more plaster. And then I will take my amazing subscriber, Nancy, all the way from Canada, sent me this beautiful gray wax. So I'm gonna dust that over. I like doing this over the stickers because I think it really makes the texture pop out at you. And then I'm going to just get a little bit more of that wax. I'm gonna hit all of those areas that are popping up on the candlestick. And like I said, we're gonna cover the back. And I decided to cover this because if somebody picked it up or something, I didn't want them to see like a torn up Dollar Tree St. Patrick's Day sign. So I just take my craft knife, I clean that up, and then we are going to attach it. So I'm gonna take my ruler, I'm gonna draw an X right in the middle, that way I know where to put my candle holder and we don't have a wonky, crooked, you know, stand here. After that dries, then we are going to take, this. these are one of those, the round glass containers at Dollar Tree. I just put a crystal knob on the top, then taking Spanish moss, I'm gonna form that into a little nest, grab a Dollar Tree bird, and it already has a clip on it, so I just clipped it to the Spanish moss, stuffed it up in our little cloche, and then I add just more Spanish moss around it. And this you guys can get like super creative. Like Shannon put um, uh, a bunny in there and then she put like the moss like rocks and stuff. So really get creative with this. I like how it turned out. 
I want a pink bird because this whole setup would be super cute too, but I'm not digging the green bird. Let me know what you think about this um, and if you'll be trying it. I really think it's cute. All right, our last one is from Ashley Lauren. Um, I saw this and the simplicity just got me, but you guys know I couldn't like leave it super simple. So in her video, she has like wood bird houses that don't have anything on them. I didn't have that. So we are using um, a birdhouse from Dollar General. It took me like three coats to cover the image on the front. I was going to leave the blue on the top and the bottom, but I ended up getting paint all over it. So all of this ended up getting painted white, just like Ashley did. So as that's drying, of course, I'm like, oh, I can't, well, I can't leave it plain. I just can't. I need to add more to it. So I got those same stickers and I'm going to put two rows of them on the top. I just, I tried. I love the simplicity of hers, but I was like, mm, no, I need more. So after that, I cover the top with plaster once again. I am going to take my IOD molds. They sent these to me and I absolutely love these birds. I will leave uh, ironorchiddesigns.com link down in the description box for you guys. Then I take my um, air dry clay. You guys, I am new to this. If there is a way, I'm I'm feeling like the clay is starting to get tougher. Is there a way, like, can I add water to it to make it like a little bit more movable? Let me know down in the comments. So as you can see, I'm putting it um, in my mold. I put cornstarch in there first so that the clay does not stick to my mold and I can easily pop it out. Then I take my craft knife and I clean it up. Now I did a couple of birds because I didn't know which ones I wanted on the birdhouse. So then I go down to a couple other birds. They almost look like they're flying towards each other. And I thought these would look gorgeous on the birdhouse together. So I just press that clay in there and then I'm going to take my rolling pin. I'm going to flatten the back out and then I just bend that mold so it pops out. And again, we'll just go ahead and clean that up with the craft knife. And while these are still wet, meaning like I could still mold them, I am taking plaster by Waverly. I'm gonna fully coat these little guys. Look at how cute and how detailed these birds are. It always blows my mind when I use their molds. They're just so gorgeous and so detailed. So after this, I take my mica powder. These are from Arteza. I think this one was called like Pearl Sage or something. It gives off a green teal iridescent color. And oh my gosh, it is gorgeous. I end up dusting the top of the roof with this powder as well. And y'all, the images, the video does not do the mica powder justice because these are gorgeous. So then I'm going to take my star bond thick adhesive. I apply it to the back of our birds, put the one up there, second one down below. I already put this down with my Valentine's day decor. I mean, you could use it with any decor and they, it just looks so stunning. I love it. And it shows you just different things you can do with different molds. And she used flowers on hers, but look at how gorgeous this is just a little bit more detail on the roof and then we got our birds that are so beautiful so you guys thank you so much for watching make sure to check out the playlist make sure to check out all the channels that i link in my description box as well and i hope you guys have an amazing tuesday and a great start to your week i will see you back here on saturday first off I look super white. I mean, I know I'm like milky white on like a good day, but like, <laughs> oh, I told my husband, <laughs> I bought box dye and I told John last night, real talk. I said, oh, I'm so dyeing my hair tomorrow. You see that? Like, it's just so light. Like, my natural hair color, I believe, once upon a time, was, like, dirty blonde. Like, Everly's color. 
And he said, no, you're not. <laughs> I said, what? And he goes, friends don't let friends use box dye. And I started cracking up. He goes, you know where I went and got my hair cut on Saturday or on Sunday? And I was like, yeah, or Saturday. What? It doesn't matter. And I said, yeah. He goes, it's a salon. You could go get your hair colored there. And I was like, no. Oh. Means I have to leave the comfort of my house. <laughs> Anyways. Hey, Hanky, you want to say hi? Come here. You're not drooly right now. Did you just drink water or anything? Okay, come here. Say hi, everyone. They haven't seen the Hanky in a long time. Yeah, my ears smell so good. He's been doing so good. He's been losing the weight that the vet said to lose. They said he had to lose 30 pounds because he was chunky. Huh, you did so. You mean getting your shape back? You look so handsome. You look so handsome, my people. You know, say hey, everyone. Huh. No, oh, you're such a handsome boy. Okay, bye. I'll feed you after this. This, this is cute, like, like that. But my head in front of it, it looks like I'm wearing something. Maybe I could like angle myself like, no, no, that would be weird. All right, let's just go with it. And we'll see. 